And of course, I did tell you before that, that we'll be having the Minister of Education joining us. Yesterday, we had a former Deputy Executive Secretary of the NUC talk about this uh, development. He said, look, it's, it's not as new as a novel as we take it, but this has unearthed many things now, and is now in public glare, and the public is watching to see how the federal government is responding to this. So if you're not familiar with this story, a young man did an investigation, uh, went undercover, and uh, was able to secure a degree in the Republic of Benin, in Kotunu, uh, to be specific, in just six weeks. But the, the certification has been there for four years. As a matter of fact, he never left Nigeria for a day. With that certificate he obtained in six weeks, he was able to enroll and mobilize for the NYSC. He served before, and the NYSC system could not detect that he served before. He was posted to Cross River State. Um, until he published the report. And due to that discovery, the Federal Ministry of Education responded by suspending evaluation of degrees from a certificate from uh, Togo and Benin Republic. So, well, the Minister of Education has joined us from Abuja studio. So let's bring in Professor Taha Maman. Professor Sa, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me this evening. Yes, Prof, there is a lot to talk about. Uh, your ministry is in focus today. So I want to explore uh, as, as much as possible. When I did have a conversation yesterday, Prof, with uh, a former uh, an executive, deputy executive secretary of the NUC, he said this is a perennial problem in, in, his, in, his, in his words, according to him. Uh, so sometimes I'm wondering... Um, for this particular incident, given the enormity of what happened in terms of the undercover report, I wonder why it took the young man to risk his, risk his life, you know, spend resources and time and all of that to be able to get the federal ministry, ministry to act the way it did. I, I don't know whether you can respond to that, sir. Well, uh, as I said, thank you, um this is actually a global problem. It's not uh, a Nigerian problem as such. And uh, Nigeria has been very active in this arena. Uh, this is not the first time uh, it's, it's, uh, the ministry is aware of this problem. And um, it has been able to keep at bay the activities of the Green Mill uh, purveyors in many ways, and if I may probably at this very early stage give you an information here which I have before me. Please go ahead. Uh, this is a report of a committee sometime in 20, late 2022 uh, in the NEC where they set up a committee on uh, degree meals. And right there in Nigeria, we were able to uncover about eight uh, institutions being run by individuals who uh, try to set up uh, such mills in the country. And one of them actually uh, was an institution in Benin that sought to operate an, uh, a similar outfit in, uh, in Zaria. And they come under various very nice uh, seductive names, European American University, Lagos, Oxford School for Continuing Education, Omahia International, Joint professional training located all over the country, actually, with campuses. Imperial College Advanced Studies, Kano, African Drug, Boris Benue, Medical University of Nigeria, Kaduna. So uh, when uh, this young journalist brought up this matter, it's, it's not as if it's something really new. And uh, probably what even facilitated his work was the initial response from the ministry when uh, when he showed up with a passport that uh, didn't indicate that he was in Benin for his studies, the ministry refused to uh, consider what he brought. Until he went back, somehow he was able to get uh, his uh, passport stamped with uh, visas backdated. And uh, so this was a problem. Probably at that stage, too, we could have simply said, the ministry could have simply said, look, made a report to immigration. For me, this is the main uh, weak area 
Otherwise, uh, the system in place is quite robust. The ministry has been very active in preventing this from happening. And as I said, it's a very major, just like drugs, it's a major uh, international problem which countries have been grappling to deal with. Some of them go to offshore countries that are outside uh, normal uh, regulatory frameworks of education managers and uh, operate there. And uh, I also recall uh, investigating a certificate, a uh, paging certificate produced by a staff in a, in a university, you know, who sought to be employed. And uh, we were able to trace uh, that it was actually obtained from a degree mill. So it's really not something new. But that is to say that uh, what he has done is not of value. It's still a wake-up call for us. And uh, that's why we quickly swung into action to stop, uh, well, suspend recognition of uh, certificates and uh, qualifications from uh, those countries that are in the forefront of this business. And I can tell you that we are not going to stop at just Togo and uh, Benin. We are going to extend the drug net. We know some countries already like uh, Uganda, Kenya, you know, even in Nigeria, where such institutions have been set up. Uh, not institutions, they don't actually have physical institutions, a lot of them. They just operate undercover, and uh, like one of them we have here, uh, from the report I saw, they, they attempted to operate or operated from a law firm. Uh, I'll get more details on that in due course. Uh, so they, so they, they don't have really physical sites. They are just very clandestine in their operations. So it's not something new to us, but we need to protect um, our employers. We need to protect the integrity of our qualifications. Now, the students who patronize them are not victims. We need to emphasize this. They are criminals. Because you have no business where no student or Nigerian has uh, any business going to patronize uh, such places, go there, pay money, disappear and reappear after a while and with uh, what you call qualifications, which really they are not qualifications at all. So I have no sympathy for such people. Instead, they are, uh, they, they are part of the criminal chain that should be arrested, and uh, I think that's what the ADUC have been doing with um, Our, um, ICPC and DSS. All the operations they've carried out so far, they've been doing that together with operations right, with prof, the if, if security I'm important. agencies. But well, the committee is to look at... Uh, Yes, Prof, I wanted to ask uh, two basic questions. Uh, just apologies. I wanted to ask two basic questions. Uh, first, and as you yeah. said, just like... Uh, your colleague said, look, this is a um, perennial problem. Now, I'm sure Nigerians are aware, but what is of interest to in Nigeria, I want to presume, is what happens now. First question I want to ask you is, uh, um, what is the committee looking into? How soon are we going to get the outcome or the conclusion of that particular investigation? And will the findings of that committee be made public so that we know that, okay, if there are people within the ministry that are complicit in patronizing or uh, aiding this criminality, we know they are brought to book. So first and foremost, what are they looking into? Second, how soon are we getting to hear out the outcome of this investigation? And what are the punishments we will be expecting? Will it be made public? Well, the certain point is that the committee is going to review the operations of the various ministries and agencies responsible for uh, recognition and accrediting of degrees from outside the country. And uh, already we are already working on uh, being vigilant on the internal mechanisms for those who try to sneak into the country. But for those uh, who go offshore, for those ones who want to strengthen the system such that uh, nobody can I bypass or come in whatsoever with such uh, qualifications and uh, get some rec any recognition whatsoever, whether it is through the ministry 
or even immigration. And even today, incidentally, I discussed the matter with my colleague uh, in internal affairs, and uh, they are going to look at the systems of uh, passport and uh, to ensure that uh, such thing will not be able to happen uh, through by immigration people. Uh, however, it was done. And then, uh, secondly, we'll uh, ensure that henceforth, all the, as this interagency collaboration very clearly uh, in the operations of, uh, you know, such uh, recognition of, of such, such degrees. And uh, so basically, and then of course, when the work of the committee is done, uh, it's going to be published, and then those who are found culpable in any way, you know, will certainly uh, be brought to book, and that's why we are having security agencies on the committee to play that role. And uh, we will make it public in the same way that uh, uh, the suspension of those deg the degrees from those countries were publicly done. Uh, nothing is going to be kept under, under, under cover at all because it is uh, our job to protect our employers who by chance may end up employing people who don't have qualifications and, and, and the skills which they claim to offer through the certificates. And it is also our job to protect the integrity of our educational system uh, both locally and, and globally. Nigeria has very respected uh, qualification system, we, we have a duty to protect that. All right, all right, Prof. You know, I'm going to ask that question maybe for you to re-emphasize uh, what I, I think Nigerians are expecting to answer. This is not the first time, with, with all sense of respect, I, I must add that, uh, Nigerians are hearing committee being set up. The reason I ask for timeline is because we are used to promises and promises. So in boosting public confidence, I suppose and I presume that a lot of the public want to know from the good professor, uh, yet we just suspended this evaluation or accreditation from these schools. This thing should take us in the next two to three months. This should take us so-so number of weeks, given this number of people involved, and later so-so-so time, we should be expecting an outcome. Exactly, that's, that, that, that's exactly what I'm trying to get out of this conversation, sir. Can you put a timeline to this conclu well, the conclusion? Uh, from, yeah, from, from, from the way we reacted, I think it can easily be deciphered that uh, this is not a government that takes long on implementation of decisions. We have a president who is uh, business-like, and uh, so this committee will start to work immediately. And then as soon as they report, it's my own belief that they shouldn't have more than three months uh, to conclude their report. and. Uh, uh, when you suspend programs of, from countries, you know, they will be interested, they will worry it. And uh, so we are not going to keep that long because there are also innocent people and also in, innocent institutions out there who uh, don't want things to hang on their neck for too long. So putting a timeline, I really don't see anything more than three months, beyond three months, uh, for us to get this out of the way. So I, I wanted Except to also that, find... You know, okay, the, it, it may... Yeah. It, go ahead, it, sir. You know, the work of the committee may, may involve traveling to some of these countries, you know, to interact with some of the regulatory agencies in those places. And uh, as I said earlier on, uh, there's a good chance that we are not going to stop at those two countries alone. Uh, because from the report that we have already, you know, it extends to many countries, Western Africa, Central Africa, and all that. Of course, we're not going on a voyage of discovery, mm. but uh, we'll do everything possible to ensure we get necessary information on some of these uh, those places. So one other thing I wanted to find out from you, Prof, is how far-reaching is this? Because given what you said, if it's a perennial problem, we can presume that some people who have gotten degrees from these degree mills have already infiltrated the system. So from what time, to, are, you, are you just taking from the people now going forward or you're looking as far back as you can? Because we don't know where they are. They could be in government, they could be in your office, they could be anywhere. 
How far reaching? How far back? How deep are you going? Well, if along the line we are able to trace that there are people already in the system, you know, uh, for instance, if a particular institution or operator has been operating, say, in the last 10 years, you know, we'll check to see if we can get records of Nigerians who attended that institution. And then once we do that, we, they are criminals. And, you know, there's no time for them to criminality. So we'll, uh, we'll trace them. As long as we're able to lay our hands on, uh, on, uh, on their institutions and, and they are right here with us, certainly uh, the security agency will go after them because they are criminals. That's where they are. Let's talk about, for the benefit of the public, who, I know you said people did, the people participate or take on these degree meals, they know exactly what they are doing. But for the benefit of the public, what exactly are the minimum requirements in terms of criteria uh, for Nigerian, uh, the Nigerian state to accept degrees from outside our country? I mean, what do you look at as a Nigerian government? Say, if we are to obtain or respect or acknowledge or approve or take in someone from XYZ countries, these are the criteria they must fulfill for us to be able to say, indeed, you went to school, you graduated with a degree, and then you're qualified to serve or to work within the Nigerian shores. Uh, I know it may be a lot, but some basics for the benefit of the public. Well, the Universities Commission have prescriptions on uh, what a student ought to have before she can be eligible for admission to Nigerian universities. So we expect similar requirements in those countries, if not more. And then the duration of the program, too, is also very important uh, because, as you have seen, you have uh, people uh, collecting qualifications in six months. You know that uh, such a person wouldn't have been trained in any way, even if he stayed there, but they don't even stay anyway. They just register and, uh, and dis disappear. So countries, various countries have uh, prescriptions or requirements for admitting people into universities. But... Same here. So if somebody is graduating from abroad, the ministry together, the university's commission, have set criteria against which they await when somebody comes in uh, for recognition. And if those criteria are not met, that certificate will simply not be recognized. That's just the effect of it. Because we can't go into a country to start enforcing our own criteria. But when, when the person steps into our country, we weigh and compare uh, his program against what, what, is, what are prescribed here. And if the criteria are not met, and then they will not be recognized. And that's why, uh, even here, we have criteria for recognizing universities and qualifications abroad. And the, list, the ministry has a list of uh, institutions across the world you know, that meet uh, all those criteria. If they don't meet the criteria um, across various disciplines which they offer, the university, the ministry doesn't give them recognition at all. So anybody who attends such institutions will be wasting his time and money. All right, Prof, what, a few more questions before I let off this issue of uh, degree meals. There is an, there's an internal problem. I was very curious, and I keep asking that question. Uh, the particular issue of interest to me is the fact that this gentleman has done his youth service before. Uh, he said he filled in his phone number and his email address, it flagged, and he changed it. But one of the most fundamental ways to identify individuals, even in our election, is biometrics. Somehow, biometrics went through. His thumb printed before to serve, he did it again, and he did not flag. What is going on? Well, I, I, I presume that's a failure of, uh, of, of technology. Sometimes it happens. Uh, you have this sort of thing happening. And uh, so it's for the technical people to be able to, be able to answer that. But as I said, um, these are some of the things we discussed earlier on with the Minister for 
uh, internal affairs, interior, uh, so that we simply have a one identification system, you know, in our country. And uh, so that you don't carry, carry different identification when you go to, depending on the places you, you go to. But if there is a failure in terms of the technology, that, 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 that's, that's a bit of a problem and it's a bit of a worry. Prof, just uh, one more question. I, I, I just don't want to let you go without asking you about the student loan. Uh, what's the status of that, sir? The president has given his word that it will be operational from this year, actually from this quarter. And the committee is working very hard to ensure that the president's word is implemented. And uh, I remember last week of December, I interacted with that committee, and they are working very vigorously to ensure that uh, the student's loan board become operational as scheduled. So it is, where it is on course. Well, there's a lot I would have wanted to ask you, but I understand uh, uh, we don't have so much time, uh, Prof, uh, but there's a lot on this student's loan issue. I wanted to uh, go through the legislation that brought it to be, which is about 23 uh, provisions in that act to see how people can get uh, scholarship or you know some level of sponsorship because there are gray areas we need to talk about. But uh, fortunately, we don't have that uh, yeah, time right time. now. So I want to thank you, Professor Ata Maman, the Minister of Education, for coming on the program to respond to this latest development as far as the issue of degree mills uh, concern. Thank you so much, Prof, for, for coming on the program. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you.